Dr. Jeff Sato is a political science professor at Louisiana State University here in Shreveport. Hey, Dr. Jeff, welcome back to Keel. Howdy. So let's start here. I am looking at theadvocate.com, and it's an article of yours, an op-ed, if you will, of yours, a few days ago. And the headline is, Would Louisiana Students Really Fare Better at Out-of-State Schools If We Defunded Tops? But, Dr. Jeff, we need tops to keep Louisiana's best and brightest at home. I... I, I are you throwing a wrench in that in that accepted uh, in that accepted statement? Uh, if you define best and brightest in a very broad sense, then I guess that statement would be true. But if you know, as, as I think most people would do, if you uh, limit it to a very small portion, the very highest uh, achievers, then uh, no, tops doesn't really do uh, doesn't really do that at all. Really? So, so is TOPS just a $300 million? Is it worth the $300 million annually we're spending? Well, it depends on, again, on, on what you think is a, is a good deal here. I mean, if, if you look at the standards, they are actually, uh, in terms of GPA, you, know, you get two things. You get a GPA in high school and, and then a standardized test score. The uh, GPA is pretty unchallenging to make and then uh, as far as the uh, ACT score which is typically the one used uh, to judge this the the uh, minimum amount in in Louisiana that there that you would have to hit in order to qualify by law is actually um, currently lower than that the national average so you know we're not looking at uh, very high achieving students we're looking at average at least towards the bottom uh, average at best so, you know, again, if you want to take taxpayer dollars and uh, and pay for very average, at best, students, and a, and a number of them, because, uh, you know, again, you, there are many more there towards the bottom of the, the list than the top, then, you know, if it, you think that's worthwhile, then, you know, that, I guess you'd say it's worth the money. But you, you've got to admit that some of those top achievers – decide to stay in Louisiana because, yes, they're going to get academic awards, but TOPS will cover everything else. They are getting kind of everything paid for, where if they go on a scholarship to UT or Alabama, they are going to have some costs. They're not going to typically get everything paid for. Yeah, it, you know, again, it depends, you know, what, what school we're talking about out of state. And, then, and also remember that TOPS doesn't pay for everything. It only pays for tuition. It doesn't pay for fees. And you, you look at this year's uh, numbers, uh, like at LSU, it's close to a thousand bucks. You'd be paying in fees on top of, of top, so it doesn't pay for everything. And, and you know that would be the case, perhaps, at another out-of-state school. But you know when we talk about the very highest achievers, uh, I mean basically, you know, uh, in-state, out-of-state, private school, whatever, uh, they often can write their own ticket. So to them, tops is irrelevant. Here is the one sentence from your article that keeps jumping out at me, and it literally flies in the face of everything that everybody says, or at least everybody who loves their tops. It flies in the face of everything that everybody says about tops. Quoting you, fully funding tops does next to nothing to prevent brain drain because the vast majority of tops recipients don't represent high achievers. That is basically what you you just said that, but expound a little a little bit more on that. That tops isn't really keeping our best at home. Yeah, sure. If we, we look at the uh, the people towards the bottom of the list, and, and you know, just to give an idea of what it's like, the uh, uh, the top the top quarter of tops recipients, the average ACT score is around twenty seven, twenty eight. Uh, and uh, again, right now, uh, you're, if you're looking at the bottom level, it's more like 2021. 20, uh, so, with those kinds of students, you know, there, you, and you compare out-of-state versus in-state tuition. I mean, it's, it's not even close. You'd be paying two, three, four times the amount, depending upon where you want to go in tuition out-of-state than in-state. So, you know, tops again is going to cover mostly not fees, but mostly what you're going to pay if you stay in-state. You pay far more going out of state, so you know it's simply irrelevant when it comes to that kind of student. And yet, the political and cultural zeitgeist here in the state is that tops must be maintained, must be funded at any cost. 
given, I mean, take a look at the last special session, right? We spend $300 million a year on tops. Is, is how much is enough? How much is too much? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the question policymakers have to, uh, have to face. You know, again, for example, uh, you look at uh, Texas A&M. Regular admission there would require uh, an ACT score that only the top quarter of TOPS recipients can even meet. And so, you know, if you say, all right, well, that's where we want to put the cutoff uh, for those kinds of students, uh, that high of achievement level, uh, well, then TOPS only costs $75 million a year. Uh, but, you know, it's the other 225 or almost that, you know, payment, you know, you've got to talk, you've got to think about this. All right, well, these are average at best students, a lot of them. And so is that really the best expenditure of taxpayer dollars to subsidize this? 